All right guys, so I came across this hitting wall not far from my joint. I thought I'd come out here after going to the gym and uh, have a bit of a whack. Um, give you a bit of a tip on something I saw online or on YouTube, which I thought was pretty good. Um, the Tennis Hacker is a YouTuber. He's got over 20,000 followers or subscribers. And um, he shared a, a little drill that he does on, on the wall rather than just bashing away. If you want to work on something in particular, give yourself a self feed and hit one ball. And uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. I've never seen that before. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, so I'm going to give it a go because at the moment I'm trying to have a bit of a look at my backhand, a little bit open on the back here. I wouldn't mind just getting this left elbow up a bit and uh, and having those strings a little flatter um, on the take back because sometimes I'm a little late bringing it around at contact and, and spray it a bit long. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to try the, the self feed and see how that goes for me. Okay, so find your distance, find your distance, and I've already had a bit of a muck around. About here is about right. Feed is dodgy, and hit one. And that way you're not chasing balls that you shank all over the place, which I'm doing a lot of. <clears throat> Something I need to work on is my footwork, really, is I am a bit of a fognini, lazy footwork kind of person. Oh. That's shit. Give that a little bit of a slice. Getting these feeds right is a little awkward, partly because I'm useless, but also because this wall isn't real flat. That's a hopeless feed. All right, so let's try to concentrate on this racket angle here. Elbow up a little higher and strike. That felt good, pretty good. Now this is a bit unnatural for me, I'm not used to Really lifting my elbow up here. I'm a little more Federer like, a bit lower, a little more open. So this is foreign. Feels pretty strong though. A little more Warinka like. Shit bounce again. So I've just picked up Selenko Confidential in this racket at 50 pounds. It feels pretty good. No weight in this racket. Decided to ditch all the weight in this racket. Oh man. Now these balls are a little bit flatter. They've been used oh, about a month. Head Tour XT. By far the longest lasting ball in my opinion out of the two that I've tried. <laughs> Dunlop AO, they feel really nice, a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to hit straight out of the can. These lasted you know, sort of three hits and they were still bouncing pretty good. They've sat in my bag for a couple of weeks now. So this will be interesting to see the video, see what my arm's doing. I'm not really paying too much attention to it because I'm talking too much. So you can see from this angle the left elbow up but it doesn't appear to be making too much of a difference at the moment but that's okay I'll, I'll keep working on this and see how we go. It feels like quite a strong position so um, it actually feels really nice. You'll see the difference now hitting non-stop balls just rushed not being able to focus on the technique getting out of breath moving all over the place but I think hitting non-stop balls against the wall can be really beneficial for doubles play you know practicing early prep you know, grip changes and just firing balls back at the net player it's hard to really focus on your full swing technique you're trying to work on and I'm stuffed get the idea 
I think this one feed one shot sort of idea is really good. So yeah, the tennis hacker, he's a natural right-hander, had an accident and taught himself to play left-handed to a pretty good standard. And I find his, uh, his channel has some pretty good instruction on there. Pretty straightforward, no BS, which is great. So I highly recommend following that guy. Some good content. Oh, that was nice. So it'll be interesting to see, interesting to see how this angle is looking on the ones where I do lift this elbow a bit higher. If it is in fact closing it off a bit, a bit more. So yeah, we'll see how that looks. But as an example, here's me just hitting some random shots. You know, if I'm gonna sit here and try to work on the backhand and I don't do a single feed, this is what it's gonna look like. And I hit all right, but you'll see this is just gonna get, get sprayed everywhere. Yeah. Oh. It's not too bad so far. And that's gone. Three balls and the ball's gone. Yep, that didn't go to the, the back end. Ball hand, I don't want. Shitty bounce, I don't want. can see I'm panting and puffing balls are a bit random footworks all over the place out of breath it's starting to cool down a little bit here in the Gold Coast but still pretty hot more excuses I'm good at oh. so that's just you know one shot shit bounce the tennis hackers got me onto onto a drill that I wish I had a seen 30 years ago. So I remember being a teen hitting on a wall at my club and just chasing balls all over the place. In particular, working on slices. So part of our, our, our session was hitting against the wall, just hitting slices. Bang, bang. Now whilst it's easy when you're up a bit closer and just hitting softer, as soon as you move back, try to give it a little more, you go all over the place a little bit, unless you're an extremely high level, which I like to think I am, but not as high level as a lot of other guys that can really smack the ball into the wall consistently in the same spot, or roundabouts anyway. That just keeps on drifting over to the forehand. So give it a go. Let me know what you think. Feed, self-feed, one shot. See how it goes.